Tom Vassell's Top 100 Games of All Time. Mike Delicio, bravissimo, sporadically bored, but never pianissimo. Z, y'all see, voice of the people. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Tom Vassell. Very subdued. I'm Mike Delicio. Oh, he was gonna. He said he was scared. <laughs> uh huh. I'm Z Garcia. Hi, and the voice everybody. of the people. I'm Wendy Yee. I cut Woo-hoo. you off like halfway. Good. I'm good. It's all <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not gonna be the first. The, the first time is definitely not gonna be the last. Time. Okay. So it was my idea to put hats as decorations. Yeah. It was not my idea to put them on the on the table. This is Wendy's this idea. This is no, no. This is a game. I'm gonna throw this on Mike's head every time there's a crossover and see if I can. Oh, succeed. I like that game. I like that. Okay. Yeah. One of them, though, is filled with bees. Have the, uh, <laughs> Scorpions. Have the emergency room on speed dial, Tom. All right. You think it's not over there? I got seven kids. That's a good point. <laughs> in this group of ten, I know yeah. we haven't started yet, but in this group of ten, I happen to have two new games to my list in this also, group of ten. Also do I. Also do I. Really? Yes. We all have two new games. Ooh. And here's the funny part. I don't. It's the same two <laughs> games. Whoa. It's 100% not the same two also, games. Mike and I, Cross it's over. the same. One of the two. One of mine is so? not it's on anyone's top 100 list. Period. Huh. Also, my two new games. this is an odd uh, little kind of quirk to my list. Every game from 30 to 21 happens to be the same game. So how did that work out? I don't know. Wow. Time to look at the coding at the Pub Meeple website. So for me, the people <laughs> You're the really one who like the same the stuff list. as me. Huh? So the people really like the same stuff as me. This is like some of my most favorite games mm. are on this people's list today. There you it's go. Most mm. favoritist. Most Mostest favoritist. Mostest favoritist. Uh, you know, I had the one up, man. All right. Oh, yeah. Here we go. I don't know what's going to happen. All Mike's games are going to be a marvelous today. I'm going to say they nothing. Are. I'm going to compliment Mike. I'm not going to say anything negative about Mike at all. This whole what is that? top 10 list. Yes. What does that you know mean? he can't I'm do be it. Getting. You know I don't have time to do it to two people. Straight hate. I assume. you got to balance are you gonna, yourself Are you going to compliment him? Shut up. Are you buttering him up yeah, or something? Yeah, you're going to be too, too sugary. I mean, look at, look he at won't that swoop of People said we were too mean to Mike, so I'm calming down. Oh. Nobody could be mean. You look and, amazing and for your age. Oh my goodness, Thomas! That's a compliment. No, that's a compliment. No, it's a backhanded compliment. <laughs> oh, come try it. No, he looks good no matter what. Mike Delicio is a handsome man. Stop! You can't appreciate See, this and, on camera. And but Z goes beyond words too. Z brought me an apple today. I did. Indeed. It was did. delicious too. What was it? A honey bee? Sugar bee. Oh, sugar bee. I did. It was a I good apple. Sugar bee. Mike's, uh, you know, Mike's uh, worth it. Oh. Let's start, okay. All right, my number 30 is not one of the new games on my list. It has been on uh, my list. It's down a few places, but it is still my favorite version of what I would call the kind of pandemic system, and it's not a pandemic game. Know what this is? Yeah, my number thirty is Thunderbirds, which is uh, a Matt Leacock design, and it really it, it is basically the core pandemic system cooperative game. But this adds a couple of twists, mostly in the in the uh, form of vehicles, mm-hmm. vehicles that allow you to do different things. Um, it, you know, you can go up to the into space and. If you're not a fan of the IP, maybe it would lose a little something to you, but I'm not a huge fan of the Thunderbirds. I mean, I watched a couple of the old creepy puppet shows when I was a kid, um, but I do really love the little bit that this adds to the core pandemic system, which is still great, but if I want to play that, I'm going to play Thunderbirds every time. I just really think this is a little bit of a, of a twist that makes it something that I go with. Amazing choice. This, this guy. Really, this is a good Don't game. Don't be patronizing to me, sir. Hey, so recently I've been playing uh, Railroad Tycoon, the old okay. video game. Yeah. And I downloaded some mods to put in it, and one of them was using the Thunderbirds vehicles to transport people. Really? Around. really? Oh. Yes. Thunderbird 2. <laughs> That's kind of fun. Well, what happens is it starts, and then you got to wait two minutes for the people to get on, and then it goes. Mm. All right. That's <laughs> no, cool. that doesn't actually do that. But they're just. Uh, I was like, what are these Gotta things? The, the I was trying to figure out. They're really weirdly sequence. shaped vehicles. Yeah. And then I remembered. Thunderbirds vehicles, and I knew that not because of the show, but because of this game. Oh, well, there you go. Although I like this game considerably less, I would put a 10 in front of 
my ranking here. This would be like 1030 for me. It's that low. So you, so you oh, hate, come you, on. No, you no, hate no. Pandemic then because this is basically Pandemic with a little bit of added twist with those vehicles. This is not just pandemic. There's some vehicles. systems that are similar. I think it's it's not it's a different enough, line. Mike. Where I don't I don't lump it in myself. Okay, okay. Um, but I do like this game a you lot. You said it's better so. than pandemic. I prefer it to pandemic to base pandemic. Ooh. Absolutely, I do. It was so easy to agree with you then. <laughs> and things are more difficult now. Yes. I, your arguments are well reasoned. Well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my number thirty is a dice game, Yahtzee style game, one of the best in that category, and that is King of Tokyo. Oh. Mm. King of Tokyo remains, in my opinion, one of the best games of its ilk. It is um, it manages to both move quickly and be flamboyant and silly. But have a lot of neat ideas packed within it. You know, this uh, the, the 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 two sort of paths to winning. You can you can try to make it to twenty victory points, or you can wipe everybody else out. You need to survive to make it to twenty points. The best way to make points reliably sitting in Tokyo. If you sit in Tokyo, you take all the hits. At some point, you have to leave. That living on the razor's edge thing mm -hmm. is really where the game's at. You know. And yes, it has player elimination, and you know it doesn't really care about a lot of these modern ideas in games, but manages to still feel fresh to me. Mm. I, I think this is a solid game. I noticed the picture there was of the dark edition. Is that the edition you would own if you only owned one? Gosh, I don't know. That one's um, that's a good one. I, I think this that's a very good uh, edition. It has those nice, you know, level up tiles or whatever along the side, but then you can't. Throw expansions into right, it. Well, right. Well, you can, but they don't. They don't there's like they one don't missing match. monster or something. <laughs> Visually, yeah. they yeah. don't really match. You know, that would bother me more than anything else. No, I mean, if you're only going for one and you don't know the game, you're, you're curious and want to pick one up, go for the regular one. Yeah. Yeah. Or the big button. Never mind. All right. <laughs> 30. King of Tokyo. My number 30 was 167 last year. Whoa. Wow. Those were my two new entries. But it's... Thunderbirds? I knew this was going to go on here. This moved up solely because this is my one of my most played games of 2021. Mm -hmm. Okay. I played it on one weekend. I played it, I think, 19 times straight. Wow. But that's because they added... They, they, oh. they 10 timed the content for this game, which brought it from me liking it to me loving it. And that's Marvel United. Oh, really? wow. Yes, okay. because yeah, the base okay. game alone did not make my list. I sure. like it a lot, but, mm -hmm. you know, there's only so many combos. Right. Now there are a bazillion combos, and that's not even talking about the fact the content's about to double. Well, and it, and it changes some of the mechanics of the game. Too. Oh, yeah. yeah the, the, thank you, Chris, for putting the, the best, my favorite version yeah. here. The Sinister <laughs> Six. Yep. I, uh, I agree that is the best one. Yeah, that's my favorite. Is that your that's picture? the most interesting. Uh, it's our table. Yeah. <laughs> I might have taken that picture because mm. I might have. I'm um, not sure. Yeah, I, I, I just love this game. And it's, it's, I like it because, for a lot of reasons, I like Marvel, but not all Marvel games are on the list. Sure. Um, I like the customizing of the difficulty. Mm -hmm. You want a bit yes. to be hard? Pull Thanos out. You're yeah. going to lose, probably. Right. And some of the characters are really difficult, like Carnage. And, and you know what? Some of the ones that I say are hard, other people are like, that's not that bad. But yeah. some of them feel really hard to me. And then others, they're easier. I mean, clearly Red Skull is not a difficult bad guy compared to the others. So if I want to play with the kids and we right. want to have an easier game, and some of the heroes are better than others. Doctor Strange is clearly better than, uh, yes. say, um, Ant-Man. Okay. You can take out those double do like wild Ant -Man. cards, you know, if you yeah, want to make it a little too. bit harder. Right, and you yeah. can change the locations, and it's a lot of customization that's not too hard either. I'm like, here's the villain, hero, 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 let's play. Yes. I really like that. That's It's not hard to set up, as opposed to, say, Marvel Legendary. I do wish that the characters were a little bit more different. You know, I used to think that, mm. back when I was a plebe, <laughs> um, that's, how, that's how that sounded, sorry. I used to think that, but I I played it a lot last yeah. year. I really can tell the difference. Yeah. It's they only have three special cards, but they they make a they, difference. They too. really felt different, and right. also the icons are different. I did a whole mathematical yeah. thing because I'm a nerd, um, yes. and <laughs> compared them. Now I do wonder if the Marvel stuff 
will be more fun because they all have at least four. You mean the X-Men? Oh, the X-Men, X-Men. sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah it does feel like an OP kind of move, doesn't it? But not maybe OP, not. but at least differential. Yeah, mm-hmm. we'll see. Yeah. But I agree with that. I, I thought that at first, too, I was like, these are very similar. They barely have a little hint of what makes them them. Mm-hmm. And I changed my tune. Like, seeing more characters later, I went back to the core box characters, and they seemed more different. Mm. To me, it had a bigger reference point. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I was like, okay. you know what? I was being way. too harsh on the how different these are. I have played characters that seem like they're particularly weak against certain villains. Yeah. Sure, I think that's so probably I felt, true. I have felt that. Yeah. yeah, sure. But again, I, I do that deliberately. I'm like, we're playing against Rhino, so we're picking these Adam heroes. Warlock. Adam, you know what? Adam Warlock feels weak against nobody. Nobody. <laughs> nobody. I'll take Strange over Warlock, but yes. So my number thirty. Marvel United. Mm. All right, so the people, they have chosen Carcassonne as their number 30. Ah. Thank you so much for doing that. Uh, Carcassonne is this cute little tile lane game. It's very simple, but it's not simplistic because you get to fight for spaces. You put down a tile, you put down a worker, um, or a meeple, whatever you want to call it. Put those down, and that's your whole turn. But once you close off things like roads or cities, you score points on those. And if you're able to sneak your way in, then you can steal that through majorities and stuff. You can steal those points from other people. So it's a game that seems really nice and sweet and then gets a little bit mean. So I think people really like it for the interesting little, just the, those choices and trying to figure out how to, how to weasel your way in. Carcassonne. If you, if you play like a jerk. Well, I was supposed to say, Carcassonne is yeah. Yeah, it's a classic. Uh, it's, it's, super classic. it's supposed to be sweet and, and kind in this mm. game. Uh, Carcassonne kind. is actually one of the games that I don't play as a jerk unless it, the, the opportunity is there, you know, like to combine a city. I don't, like, tickets right. I'm going to, I'm cut, coming for you. Cut me off, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but in, in Carcassonne, it's more of a, oh, look, these cities are about to combine. Okay, I'll try to make that happen. Yeah. I don't go out of my way to do it. This is one of the few games where I do go out of my way to do it. I just try. <laughs> like, that's, that's the point of this Yes, game. Wendy's only mean in this game. Only in mean one in of this the few. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's why yeah. I really like the first expansion, first or second, whichever one added those uh, shields, that when you close the city, no matter who's scoring it, you get the shield. I love that. Mm. Mm. That's, because that's a great then rule. I might, instead of trying to figure out a way to get in there, I might just be like, oh, I'll shut it down. Yeah. I'm the one who closed it, so I'll get this majority at the end you of the game. You get fewer points. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I like that one. I am a little surprised this is this high still on the people's list. I mean, That's the true. That's Historically, the 30th this is, anniversary just came out. This yeah. is the lowest it's ever been, though. Wow. Yeah, okay. this is its lowest year. Yeah. It's been above 20 every other year. Well, this is a game that yeah. gets people into the hobby much like Catan. So. It is, it is. Yep. All right, so that's People's Choice number 30, Carcassonne. All right, my number 29 is a game that has been out for quite a while, a new edition. It was out of print for a number of years. A new edition came out, but on my list, I'm putting the original because I actually slightly prefer it. There's a very small difference between the two. My number 29, I think, is a crossover with you. Okay. Cleopatra and the Society of Architects. And so I asked Chris specifically if he would put this version on here. Now, this version is not available right now. If you are interested in the game, you can get the, is it Mojito Games? Mojito Games, The new version that is out there from Mojito Games. It's essentially the same game. I have a small, soft spot in my heart for the original, but they really are essentially the same game. It is a very light, welcoming game, to use Z's terminology, where you are playing cards to take actions that allow you to build different things. You know, those obelisks that you can see, the the Sphinx uh, statues. You can actually put a little mosaic on the top, which is a little bit of a a tetromino before they were the big thing in board gaming. It has a little bit of everything and a couple of really neat little design twists that I love. My favorite aspect of it, as stupid as it sounds, is there is a market deck of cards Mm -hmm. and you take that big deck of cards You flip one side face up, the other side face down, and you shuffle them together so that when you have these three rows of cards, you see some of the cards in the row and others you don't. And so there's a little bit of a push your luck thing because some of the cards are corruption type cards where they can give you some some corruption. That's just such a smart thing. It really is so smart. So I still like this. This is the Days of Wonder edition, but again, if you can't find this one and you're interested, the Mojito version is just as... I actually agree with Mike even more strongly. 
I'd rather on the original version. Sure, sure. The new version is bigger. It looks nicer. It's a pain in the neck. I would only get it because it's available. That's the only reason I would get it. Otherwise, I don't even I'd know if it's this. that available. It was a yeah, Kickstarter. Maybe, maybe. You know, the the new one has better mechanisms. I think it's a better game. I think the old one is ultimately a better production. Yeah. And it, the new one's a very big production. It's, mm -hmm. I mean, it's just based on like the production itself. It's a much more uh, extravagant thing. It is. But yeah, the original one was a tight package, yeah, man. They put a was. lot in that Ticket to Ride size box. They put a lot in there. They did. They did it smartly. Yeah. Yeah, and in, in, in an ideal world, it would be that original packaging and look and everything with the mechanisms from the new one. But and no, this is not in my top 100 this year. Anyway. Oh, maybe maybe it was the Peoples. I thought some. I thought we no, definitely it was not in the Peoples. The really? game is not that popular. It did not sell that well for Days wow, of Wonder when okay, it came then, out. Then the this... reprint did well because of Kickstarter. But gotcha. I thought we had discussed this before. Maybe you know not. that nobody, I think, pulled it out of the retreat. Do we have the original version? No, we got the big one. We got the, the new that big might one. be why. It's Maybe scary. intimidating to people. It's, it's a huge so. box rather than a ticket to ride size <laughs> box. Sure. Speaking of scary, guys, uh, my number 29 self -referential. is a. Uh, I did, I'm the one who said scary, right? And yeah. Then, uh, mm. I was giving myself a. Uh, <laughs> Harry scary. I'm sorry, here. I'll pat you in the back. Thank like you. <laughs> 29 is Subterra. Whoa. Subterra is a <laughs> cooperative. Tile laying game in which you are, you spelunk down into a cavern, you get stuck there, you need to find your way out. And along the way, you will have to contend with tremors down there, with uh, gas pockets of noxious gas, uh, with um, sharp rocks and tight corners, you know, with having to attach a rope to climb or, or climb down. And Monsters, mm. which nobody told me was part of the deal. I thought I just had to deal with a cavern. So there's going to be all this stuff, and you need to find an exit and get out. Much like other co-op games I like, you know, Pandemic, any anything like that, it's that whole do something bad, um, activating things mainly, and then you have this many actions to be efficient. And I tend to really like those kinds of games. On top of that, this one has a really nice amount of cooperation. If somebody loses all their little hearts, a little health, then somebody needs to be near them and go and revive them, or you've got to double back sometimes and go help them out. So there's all this cinematic, like, oh no, so and so just took, you know, just went down. We somebody needs to peel peel back and and go help them, you know. Nope. Now you're, you're <laughs> you can't now. you can't let them die because at the end it's just. Whoever gets out is who survives, I guess. I'm not in the Marines. We leave men behind. Okay, mm. that's not okay. You, you should try. <laughs> I'm um, never going spelunky with you. That's right. <laughs> oh, well, you know how that's going to happen? We ain't going spelunky. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't going to happen. Um, <laughs> anyway, I really like this one. I think it's just a fun game. Um, cool theme, different theme. Very cooperative, very tight game. So, yeah. So, so I've, I've played Subterra 2 but not number one. Does it have the same issue where like, or not issue, uh, the same thing where you, you have to be issue. very careful mm -hmm. where you stop because stuff I don't happens. Know. So Terra 2, I don't know how you played because it's not out, so. It was a. Play a pre-production? It was a pre-production, yeah. Yeah, I don't know, I haven't oh, played it. She's okay. better than you. So, oh, so it was years so, ago. So, so Subterra is broken is what you're telling me. How do you respond no, to no, the, oh, no, uh, the accusations? The accusations that Subterra is, is a broken, broken game and therefore not worthy of your time. I think you get broken when you play the game. Oh. Yeah, that's how it works. My answer to that, my official <laughs> answer is, if you want to hear broken, Tom, go ahead, hit <laughs> You like my next game. It's the highest ranked party game on my list, and it's been on my list since the beginning. Wow. Number 29, time's up. Yeah. Uh, always works. Mm. Always works for me. Um, just, I enjoy the game. I, there's not a lot more I can say about it. We, and I, I will say that, that there is many versions of it now. Yeah. Every three or four years, a celebrity discovers the game and comes out with their own version. Sure. They're like, look! And I know that there's a funky version of it that shuts it down like it, um, what's it called? Um, Monikers. Monikers. Monikers, mm -hmm. which is essentially the same game, but has things like... But more, the, it's more adult, right? Not so much more adult, but it's like a... 
it's not famous people as opposed to like a mime on a tricycle. Yeah. And so you have to guess a, a, a an odder thing. And I have yet to try that version, so it might be better. Sure. Or funnier. But I just like Time's Up. It just works. It's fantastic. Yep. Very cool. All right, The People's 29 is one of my most favorite games, and this just keeps getting better with, with age. Let me tell you what these scores were. It was 145 mm -hmm. in 2018, 39 the next year, 32 mm. this year, it's 29, and this is Brass Birmingham. Ah. Oh, this game, mm -hmm. every time I see it, I just mm -hmm. love it. Mm -hmm. I was taking pictures, um, actually, mm -hmm. for this, and I set it up, and I was like, man, I set all of this up, and I don't get to play it. I just have to take pictures of it. Oh. So I was very disappointed. Oh, so sad for you. <laughs> I literally I am playing me. it this have... Saturday. I was promised it that's going to happen this Saturday. Saturday. I'm playing huh? it Saturday, yeah. Oh. yeah. Is that happening here? I don't know if that's happening here or not. You know it. Probably. Oh, no. We'll man. see. We'll see. But anyway. I, I got to play like Game Twilight Night Pyram to balance the mm. equation uh, out or something. Raspberry Ham, such a good, heavy, economic, very Euro gamey thing where you're building in different industries. You're flipping over <laughs> tiles. You're positively interacting with the market. There's so much good stuff going on. Um, really cool card management. I... I just love everything about this game. That's that's basically it. Game have, over. I'm have done. you played uh, Brass uh, Worcestershire? Lancashire? Worcestershire? Worcestershire? You know what? Lancashire. I did play Lancashire, and I didn't love it. Okay. It was you okay, and Birmingham. I feel like this fixed everything wrong with it. I What's feel... the OG one? Which one's the original? Lancashire. Lancashire is the original. Definitely. Yeah. It's not close to which one gets played more at, the, at our conventions. <laughs> yeah. I had two copies yeah. of both. I was like, oh, people... I went down to one copy of this one because well, it just got playing the other one. Oh, the other one is the one that gets played more. Okay. No, no, no. This one gets played. This, one gets, this played gets played more. Because yeah. it the other got one is you make the top. So many mechanisms that yeah. just didn't. I mean, there were just a few mechanisms that just didn't really work well, and so this streamlined. It was great. It added more stuff. Right. So, yeah. So that is number twenty-nine, Brass Birmingham. My number 28 is one of the new games on the list, and as a matter of fact, it's a game that we just played live here on the channel within the last few days. Ooh. Ooh Sleeping what Gods. Is it? My number 28 is Sleeping Gods. I was just making it up because it was yours. I didn't pick his on purpose. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Sleeping Gods. Yeah. Yeah, this is, and, and so I So you feel... disagree with Mike on this one, right? No, no, no. I said I was going to say kidding. good things about everything yeah. Mike did. Okay. Mike. Amazing choice. Well, thank you. I feel even more just fine. I'm like, man, this is coming in pretty hot. But obviously I made this list before we played it again live. Yeah. And we played just like for a couple of hours, barely got, you know, a couple of locations. And I was annoyed at the end of it. That we had to stop. Because I wanted to keep playing uh, well, the game. Mm -hmm. This is this just is a, like this is the equivalent of like an earworm is to music. Yes. Just gets in there. It, you're like, I want to keep going. It's just oh, so Lord. smooth. And and you know, I've already played through uh, a full campaign and many other games outside of that. And it has not lost its luster. I still feel like there is so much more for me to explore. Yeah. I'm not even talking about the dungeons that you can add. I'm not even talking about the uh, the extra map book that you can you know go into. Uh, just off that base uh, spiral bound map book, there is so much there to explore. Mm. Uh, and I think that this one leans the heaviest in the story direction of any of the Locket kind of story-based games. And even after reading the Now or Never rules, I think that's still the, definitely the case. Okay. This one definitely leans more into story, but it has enough underpinning of it, of a game there, that you don't just feel like you're... I've seen some people say, oh, this is just a choose-your-own-adventure book. Hogwash. Absolutely Balderdash. not. It is complete Balderdash and hogwash. Yes, and other words. It's definitely a game there. It's definitely <laughs> plenty of game there and great story. Maloney. And great world building. And uh, I really enjoy a lot my number 28. Sleeping Gods. A superb pick. Thank you, sir. Wow. Lovely. My number 28. Trash. <laughs> I think you're wow. going to think it's even more thematic than Mike's pick. Oh. oh. Really? Hang on to your hat. My number 28. <laughs> Carpe Dio. Mm. <laughs> oh. Look at that. That's a looker. That's a looker. The mystery, the suspense on that cover. Mm. Is she or is she not selling that man a fish? Also, is what said is fish. Options? Based on the look on her face. Is that said fish she poisoned? She I is think she's ripping buying that it, dude actually. off. 
Whatever she's doing, she is ripping that guy off. She has got a very smug look on her face. Yeah, she's I like, thought this sucker She's going to give him the me. day old fish. I thought this game was one. ugly, but last night I had a very strong reaction. Chris was playing, um, uh, he won't tell me now, but good. Oh, Hans, Hans Teutonica. Ah. The newest version of it. <laughs> and I was like, ah! And I, it's a good game. It burns. It's a good game. It's oh, good. look at that. Mm. So much, yeah, so at, much brown. Mm, you can taste the point salad mm. from here. The star circle. Uh, Just I by looking at that picture, you all got two points. <laughs> 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 that Carpe Diem uh, is a pretty modern Feld game, mm. but you know I think he did a good job restraining himself mm. from throwing everything and the kitchen sink into this one. He's done it before. Trajan's probably the best example of that. That just feels cobbled together. This one doesn't. This one manages to feel very clean. It's a tile laying game. I, I like that. You're building your own little district or area or whatever, connecting things and then scoring based on those things. And then the neat part, my my favorite part of the game besides the the, the building, is that at the end of a round when you're when you're meant to score, you will go to that that side display of cards, put a token of yours between any two cards so right between the cards and you score for the two adjacent ones that token stays there that exact combination cannot be scored again mm. that's pretty clever mm. and it works well and that's random every every game so you need to look ahead and see what you can do what's your first option if that gets taken by someone in earlier turn order what else can you do that still mm. works that's neat yeah a euro game yes it's not the prettiest game but this one, uh, e even when it came out, like right away when it came out, it, it hooked me pretty good. So I enjoy it. And you have like four or five different editions to choose from, too, don't you? <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, this has been reprinted uh, <laughs> uh, an unnecessary amount of time. I mean, it's had some production issues it has. with yes. coloring and yeah. stuff. So. Mm. All right, my number 20. <clears throat> Where are we? 28? 28. It's so close to being a crossover with Mike. It's <clears throat> been on the list for five years. And that is near and far. Oh, it was a crossover with me last, last list. Ah, that doesn't count. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, I, I don't know where the next one's going to land. Right. And we, I just looked at it, and it looks awesome. But Ryan Locker games always look awesome. Mm -hmm. Very, very pumped about playing it. That's happening this Saturday. That's what's happening during the boring ah. game of grass. This right. Saturday is when you're playing it? From what I understand, it's now or never. Hmm. Huh? I don't have a response for that, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like All it. All right, stop the top ten. Let's put the game out now. <laughs> anyway, I love Near and Far. It mixes story. I like Near and Far better than Sleeping Gods. And and, Do the, you? and the reasoning why is I love Sleeping Gods and everything involved in it. Yeah. But I really um, I love the gameplay of Near and Far yeah. so much. I mean, I'm le they're less than ten points apart. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What? Yeah. yeah. Spoilers. No, I already get, already oh. had near and far. Never mind then. She doesn't watch it. Right? <laughs> like, well, as all people should. Thank you, sir. Wow. You I'm are sure. really what? bringing it. He's bringing it today. Very sincere. I, something <laughs> terrible is going to happen once that camera is off. <laughs> I'm warning you right now. Hey, I was once nice to Mr. Bonica for like half a year straight. Mm. And then. Wow. Then, then my head burst. With a hammer. The day with right. chance Anyway, near and far, fantastic game. It's my favorite of these. Awesome. Yeah, about microphone. Oh, Who's microphone? Who's microphone? Not sure. Mm -hmm. Lot mm -hmm. of mic. Is Mike certain? No, it's, it's, am, I it is am I making not me. too much noise with this? I always Maybe seem to be the one that's pointed out. It is definitely not me. It's nowhere not, near my shirt. It's All not right. me. I'm not wearing a microphone. Mm -hmm. This is what I sound like. All right. Well, the People's Choice number 28 was number 28 last year as well. So clearly it is on a, on a winning streak. It was 82 the year before, so also getting better with time. Mm. And this is Space Space. This is an engine builder game where you get to benefit on other people's turns. you got a board in front of you, and you're, as you purchase cards, you lay them down, and you roll a couple dice. And when your dice are rolled, you get to choose either to combine the two dice together. Let's say we have a one and a six. And you can activate your number seven space. Or you can separate them, and you activate your number one space and your number six space, as long as you have cards there. It's a super cool game, and I think that, yeah, for me, the, the coolest part is that you can do stuff on other people's turns when they roll their dice. Some of your stuff can get triggered, and it, I think that's awesome. It's 100% a great game. 
Yeah, it's, mm. it's good stuff. Can win the, I call it the, the too. poor man's bad company. Mm. Nobody calls it the poor man's bad company. <laughs> Z calls it that. Your grandpappy's bad company. That's what it is. <laughs> Yep, so oh yeah, <laughs> this game is so old. That's, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Ram back in the day, we played Space Base. Yeah, it's like move your dot matrix printer and let me play some Space Base. <laughs> great game, great choice. So number twenty-eight for the People's Choice, Space Base. All right, my number twenty-seven <laughs> is. Um, a game that is very consistent, it's only moved one spot, and it is my favorite. I consider this a party game. Uh, okay. I, I don't know if you would agree. I, I consider it a party game. It is Deception Murder in Hong Kong. Yes. Mm. I typically bounce off of these type of games, uh, although I'm getting more comfortable with them the more I play them. Yeah. Uh, but this one hit for me right away, and I think that it solves a lot of the problem that these games can sometimes have, being that a lot of times people don't like being put on the spot where they're the only one that's lying, mm -hmm. right? This kind of takes that away because everybody could be lying. You know what I mean? All you have to do is just try to make a case for all of these cards that you have in front of you or try to point people towards any one of those other three sharp objects there that could be that. So it right, just let's pause just for a second. Okay. We have a mic problem, but the, the mics are definitely not on people's shirts. So we're yeah. going to turn off the mics one at a time and see okay. whose it is. So Mike, okay. you're first. All right. Mine's off. Okay. Actually, I'm just kidding. We're going to do the rest of the show. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, so Mike's is off. All right, so we're all talking okay. now. Yes, we're all right. Turn yours back on. It's the benefit of live, right? Z, it's okay. your turn. Now my mic is on. Okay, mine's off. All, All right. right. We're right. talking. Is he present going? better. We're talking. Yeah. All right. We're talking. Okay. Uh, Any weird Deception. issues? Okay. He's the murderer. Mm -hmm. All right. You're back on, and I'm off now. I'm off. Okay. Okay. I'm okay. waiting. There we go. Yes. Tom. Okay. All right. Tom. Right. Tom is now the traitor. Good. As okay. always. Okay. That's good. Don't know. Now blah, it's good. Blah, blah, blah. All right. I'm coming back. I'm back. All right. All right. I'm off. Now Wendy is okay, The so, people are gone! Now we're back. There we go. No! Now we're talking. Okay, we found the, the culprit. Are not Mike's. Definitely not mine. We can All take right. that one out of there. So what right, problem? We have no idea. It's, it's, it's Nick Mike. It isn't Mike. It is Tom's. Mike problem still. How could it be Tom's? All right, I'm putting oh, my yeah. back in the middle because okay, that wasn't the issue then. you got to move around also. A loose connection. Yeah, that, that's, that, that's possibly that it. It could be a Some people a loose are connection. too picky. Might be Tom's. Maybe Z. Hey, that worked. All right. My number 27 is Deception Murdering in Hong Kong. Anyway, deduction game where one person is the murderer, somebody is the, uh, in, what are they called? The investigative yada yada something yeah. or other. The one who's trying to lead people it's in me. the direction. Apparently it's me. No, look, half the people are saying it's ma mine. I don't know. <laughs> Some it's Chris's. Chris. Yeah, clearly. Yeah. Anyway, it is uh, a splendid game, and we've all kind of lost the plot here. Deception. Yeah, no one cares about mics. Murder number. in oh, Hong Kong. They're deceiving us mm. by telling us there's something wrong with our mics. All right. They think they're playing the game. I'm very... super confused. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Anyway, good choice, Mike. A Thanks, great Tom. game. So I, microphone I, I, is definitely not. I'm barely. I don't right. understand. Very okay, sure. I will be particularly still. Mm. My number twenty-seven is brand new to the list, and also like a really new game. Brand new game. Wow. It's Radlands. Oh. What? I really like this game. Wait. 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 We just did a review of this. Yeah. What was your rating on it? A nine? He did give it a nine. But you've already had a ten on your list earlier than a oh, nine. Oh, we're not oh, playing don't, this game. Don't overanalyze. We are not playing this game. <laughs> we're not doing this. <laughs> I will rip you apart if you go down this road. <laughs> oh, no, you won't because I checked mine. <laughs> you have like 14 years worth of data I can mine, okay? Okay. will wreck you. All right, all right, all right. All right. These I just, things are I just not... don't remember you like raving about and it as much in the review. That's all. And again, I put this all into a ranking yeah, engine. yeah. Spit it out and gave it to Chris. I didn't touch it. Oh, so Chris moved it up. No, yeah. he didn't. Chris, this is where outrageous. it is. Then that's okay. I'm I'm going with it. Yeah, you know, yeah. if if I kept passing other games over for this one, there you go. Yes, maybe I'm excited about it because it's new. Yes, whatever. But it's 27. Yeah. I really like this game though. Wow. And I've continued playing it. I've taught it to a few people. Every time I play this game, I just have a blast with it. Yeah. I think it's very sharp. 
Uh, it's a gorgeous looking game. It's mm -hmm. a clever game. It's a minimalistic design. The whole thing works for me and my brain from theme to look to style of game to being a two player only thing. Mm -hmm. It's 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 pretty close to being the kind of game that if I could, you know, dream up something that I'd want, this is close to that. So yeah, I think that's why this is so high. Yeah, now I I was in that review and I didn't rate it quite as high, but it's not because of the game itself, it's because I don't particularly love these types of games. But sure. the thing that I do appreciate oh. about this is how clean of a rule set it is. It is. I yeah. mean, it is like you don't have to find four pages of exceptions and weird edge cases. I mean, it's pretty play your cards, do what it yeah. says. So it gives so. you that collectible card game feel, right? right. Without the overhead. Yeah. You know? Very um, much. Yeah. Radlands. It's awesome. Yeah. I really like it. Tom, wow. get off my back. This was a surprise. All the this way is, off my back. This was definitely this is, a surprise. I think on my docket for playing tonight. I, I was yet, just asking a, a question of mm. sorts. I was just you it was keep a, it was a to clarifying yourself, okay? question. Winch. Mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. What do you got? Really quick before you go, Tom, uh, put one of the uh, fuss filters on yours. I don't. That that doesn't make crackling sound. This only I, I stops the popping. There we go. I think at this point the mic's probably like actually. Yeah. Busted. Oh, we're blaming This is our Tom. guest like star this. here, the Roy Kennedy. Hey. Oh my goodness, this top ten is off the rails. Do we yeah. have yakety sax, Chris? Can you play yakety sax right now? Please do yeah, not. That's Ringling and Brothers, right? That's one of the old microphones. So. Yakety yak. Don't. No, no, it's the... These that don't come off on these. Hopefully that helps. If not, we have a pile more, right? Yes. Well, there's some more here, but... Guys, that was great. That's fantastic. All right, all right. Hopefully that helps. Anyhow. That was hot. Oh, I'm too loud now. Stop hitting on him, Chris. You are a hot man. Yes, and your microphone is hot as steel. You are a hot man. Yes, and your microphone is hot. All right, so here we go. Anyhow, um, <laughs> what is my number 27? Where are we at? Okay. Okay, my 27. My number 27 is a game that has been on at least the people's choice. I don't know if either of you had it. You oh, might have had it, I remember. Sure, yeah, this yeah, game is amazing and is better than um, the uh, the rest of the games in the series, and that is Race for the Galaxy. Mm. I like Roll for the Galaxy. Ah, okay. I like the... Puerto Rico space one, whose name I forgot suddenly that no one ever plays. Oh, San Juan? No, no. Uh, Puerto Rico. New Frontiers. New Frontiers. Yeah. New yeah. Frontiers. The oh, New Frontiers oh, oh. is a race for the Galaxy board game, which is good. It's overly big, unfortunately, mm -hmm. and it's not as smooth as Puerto Rico. That but really went away though, didn't it? It really did. But Race is such a smooth game. Yeah. Uh, race for the Galaxy. I enjoy. Uh, I already had Terraforming Mars, Ares Expedition, which was based on Race. For the galaxy, but I don't. They have the same mechanism, but they're really not they're the very same different game games. At all. Yeah. Yeah. You use the same mechanism, but then the game itself is different. In Race for the Galaxy, you are building planets in front of you, getting resources, trading them. I love it. Mm. I've, I've and, I'm, and I've also this was on my list of games that I don't like teaching to noobs. We did this. Uh, list yeah, a lot, right? yeah, yeah, for sure. But I'm getting it. I've taught it to a lot of new people in yeah. 2021. I think I can pull it off now because I, d I want to play it so much I'll teach it to new people. You've kind of mm. found a script for you that works in teaching. Yeah, a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So I'm happy about that. Okay. Great game. All right. All righty, all righty. Number 27 for the People's Choice is Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. Oh. This is Gloomhaven Miniature. It does have miniatures, but it's not that miniature. <laughs> trying to see the picture? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, we've got the, mix, we've got the mixer board He's doing stuff magic on, on Is this your lion still? pose got going on here? Rar stuff? Things? Uh-huh. Okay. Go. Okay, sorry. Gloomhaven. So, Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. This is a tactical cooperative game, but you get a story. You get to make decisions after every round. You get to level up your characters. It's very good stuff in a much smaller box than Gloomhaven, and um, I think that it has just as much to give. In a lot of ways. I agree 100%. Yeah, I yeah. think that the, the actual production of this game makes it more approachable to a lot oh of people. Oh, my word. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's essentially the same game. You're playing Gloomhaven at the end of Jaws of the Lion for I, the most part. I allowed yeah. there to be multiple entries for this on the list Okay. this year for the people. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
once frost saving comes out i may i don't know sure, sure. yeah. um, i may combine them or something because right. i mean i know frost haven is going to have a lot of different things i don't know how i feel about that because it's yeah but but gloomhaven jaws of the lion is clearly gloomhaven yes with a much easier a setup. tutorial right a great yeah. tutorial too and there's there's some things that they took out to make it smoother but by the time you get through the tutorial you're playing Gloomhaven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yep. So that is the people's choice for number 27, Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. All right. My number 26 is a game that I have talked about a number of times in the past. Ad I think nauseum, this is I would ad say. nauseum, correct? This is another one of those games I feel like I'm maybe the only. One of the few people that do like it. Um, yes, but that adds so much. Thank you, Tom. To the value that, of that Thank game. you, Tom. I appreciate you. Wow. Your, your words what of encouragement are, are in trouble. Wow, I'm so busted, right? Hey, Andre, thanks for the super chat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to make up for something else. Correct. Well, Mike hasn't seen his desk yet. Yeah. So my number 26 is Mass Mora Dungeons of Arcadia. Okay, oh. never mind. I can't. I can't. This is I garbage. Know. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> I do say this. This is a game that I play almost exclusively cooperatively. You can play it both competitively and cooperatively. And, and competitively, I think it is not the strongest way to play this game. I think okay. cooperatively it works out very well. It has very similar feel to Arcadia Quest, where you're just kind of running through a dungeon, beating up baddies. The baddies in this case are dice. And that's one of the things I really like about it, is that you've got kind of minor monsters and major monsters. And when you go into a room, you flip over a tile. It's a kind of a tile laying game in that sense. When you flip over a tile that has a minor monster, you reach into a bag of minor monsters, they're dice, you pull it out and you roll it to see what type of monster. Okay. It's a really clever way, so you don't have to have 8,000 miniatures. You can just have a bag of dice. And I think it works really, you can see that blue die right there is a monster, all right? Hey. Um, I love it. I know that you don't hey, like it. Make a counter or a mini. No. I don't want no dice. I love, I, I wanna, love. I want to roll dice. No, I, I, I love this system of doing it because I think it makes it much more manageable on the table. Uh, but it's quick. It is, uh, you know, again, it has the feel of Arcadia Quest, but this time in a cooperative manner. I really, I've played this game so many times. I play it at least once or twice a year. Um, really? I just, I, I wow. see it on the shelf and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to 45 minutes bust out a game of Mass Mora. I really like it a lot. There we go. My number 26, Mass Mora Dungeons of Arcadia. And you can, if you get a little crossover pack, you can play these these characters in no. Arcadia Quest. Yes, I you can. Hate you can this. take it's the It's not Arcadia a crossover Quest. pack. They actually come in the game. So if you want to use these characters in Arcadia Quest, you've got to buy this game, throw away the rest of the game, because it's not worth it, you're wrong. and just use the characters. No, no, that is actually... It's not no, I know. You're pack. wrong about throwing away the game. The game is very good. It's my 26th best game of all time. You know what? I bet it's going to be crossover with the people. Oh, we're going to go so down... Much you're going nice. down some Cross really uh, dangerous uh, roads, Tom. It's pet up for five! You are going so down I, some I, I really... apologize, apologize. Uh, Your eclectic this taste... This is so emotional is interesting. over here. Oh, boy. These are... These are rough. So much for being sweet to you. Uh -huh. That's done. That's over and done with. No, no. It's, it's back. It's back. I, I can do it. Okay, my number 26 is another two-player game, very different from mm. Brad Lambs. Uh, and it's dropped a decent amount, I guess. Um, it's not hitting the table, I suppose. The same will be definitely set for my next one. Mm. It was 10 last time, 12 the year before that. Claustrophobia 1643 Yeah, this is, is my pick yeah. here. This is a big game. This is a miniatures game that has these gigantic tiles that make up a dungeon. And... Echo. <laughs> You're and, in a dungeon! Uh, <laughs> one player is going to be playing some human survivor character people, and then the other player is playing straight up hellish beasts, like troglodytes and demons and all this stuff. Mm. And then it's it's mission based, so it's sort okay. of like scenario based. In this one, you have to just find the exit and get out. In this one, you need to plant explosives near this uh, nest and deal with you know the the fact that these monsters will are going to continue spawning and, and make it to the surface. It's a very dark world, it's a very you know grim sort of setting. But I love the gameplay in this. It's an hour or forty five minutes. Mechanically, it's clean, straightforward. Both sides play very differently, but they're both really engaging. No one has to be the sucker and play 
for your friend and be yeah. like, okay, I'll be the good guys or the bad guys so you can have fun. Both sides are really into it, you know, and they're very, um, just very captivating. Um, yeah, I think uh, Claustrophobia here, 1643, which is the, the reprint of Claustrophobia, brought a lot of new scenarios into one box, cleaned up some rules, um, added a lot of iconography, which is sometimes tricky, but I'll put up with it for the experience. This is fantastic. Do you so, play in a dark, tight space just to really have that thematic feel? No. Okay. See, so what I'm saying is publishers, if you want to find your way. I get it. <laughs> Are you yeah. related by any chance, right? <laughs> to Christopher Yee? I, Not by blood. I, I hope so. We've already covered this, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Publishers, if you want to get yourself on Z's top 100 list, and let's face it, who doesn't? Set it in a cave. Spelunking the cave game. That's we have true. two already. Oh, right. oh it's cave God. day. Cave day. Any more Team cave outing. games? Let's go Are there any more Christian Osby came cave games? No. All right. There's no uh, caves down here in Florida, huh? My, my number. <laughs> no. <laughs> my number twenty-six uh -huh. is new to the list. However, yeah. I've played this game for. 11, 12 years. And Hold that, up. And it's at 26? Yeah, you know what? I was, I was making this list. I said, I play this game at every convention I go mm -hmm. to so many times. And everyone has a blast playing it. I know Why what, is I it know not what, on my list? I think I know what this is. Let's what? See. Magical athlete. That is correct. Wow. You are a huge nerd. You do teach this at every convention I've ever and seen. And I don't do it just once. No. I like teach it once a day. And people <laughs> and people usually want to get a copy of it. Yes. I'm, so there's, there's, there's a small profit. Well, you can get a copy of it. I've definitely modified mine. Yeah. Which is hard to believe. I mean, when you look right now. <laughs> Ooh, I mean, look that's at a this. looker. This yeah, is, baby. I mean, I, I, I guess I did make fun. I got to take back everything I said about. Carpe both, diem. Carpe diem. I can't wait to hear the rest mm -hmm. of this. Yeah. Oh, come on. You know, you know the game's good. Magic Lightfoot is, is fine. such Magic a Lightfoot is fine. stupid game, <laughs> but it brings me more joy and excitement yeah. than any other game in existence. Now, that should be your number wow. one. Wow. Most joy and excitement. Joy? Most played at you're conventions. You're not playing for joy. You're doing something wrong. I, 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 Tom's number one <laughs> game of all time. <laughs> Tedium. Magical Athlete. No, Tedium and Misery. Right. Joyful Magical Athlete. Alright, so Magical Athlete is a roll and move game <laughs> where you roll and move your guy around the track. First person to the end wins. But you all have special powers. And it's the special powers that make the game. Because it be, Clearly. It turns into such a ridiculous thing. Did, did yeah. I tell this to you? No. Huh. You haven't taught it to me, Tom. I, I, I didn't know that your top favorite 20 number whatever this is game of all time was... Super, you didn't teach it to me. Super rude. It's 26. It's very clearly mm -hmm. right here. I'm going to say... I'm looking at you, not the yeah. I will say this, though, Tom. I, I appreciate, since we, we, we got a love fest going on here, apparently. I, I feel do, really awkward, right? As well you should. Um, third wheel much? I do appreciate that you are willing to approach your list in a way where... I, I get the sense, it's like, you've probably thought, yeah, I really like this game, but I, it, does, it's, it doesn't belong on a top 100. It doesn't... Maybe you had this kind of a weird Maybe, thing, and I, now you're just like saying, you know what? No. This game, I play it every year, multiple times a year. And that's why Vabank got on the list earlier. Yeah, yeah. These same kind of games. I'm playing them so much. Yeah. yeah. It's um, easy. I, 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 I had this kind of epiphany at, at a retreat, because I would go to a game that's in my top 100 and be like... I don't feel like playing that. Yeah. I want to play this. Well, then why is this in the top sure, 100 and this is not? Yeah. You know what epiphany I just had? I can go to my computer once we're done and check what you rate this. <laughs> oh, you're going to get wrecked. Yes. You but, are going to get wrecked. You're, close, you're closer to your own computer. <laughs> He's got his phone oh, right there. Phone. Yeah. <laughs> I, I need to look something yeah. up. I can't wait to see what you rate this on board. I don't remember. Me. Well, it had to be an 8.5 at least because it would not have shown up in my... Oh, and your I mean, my tumble things to even choose from. Okay, yeah. all right, I'll mm. give it to you. That's mm. fine. Is it in Dice Out Library? Is it? It is. Yeah. But it's a, a, you have like a custom one with extra characters. It's a ridiculous custom one. The thing is, I, th I think part of it is is my insanity that I bring to the game. I think is part you of my enjoyment. You run the game. It's almost like you're a game show host when you play this. Yeah, game. It is, although we did one time try this as yes. a live game show. It's in our top five. Worst game shows we've ever it, run. Uh, it, was, it, did it, did not, not, it did not do what I thought it would do. No. But anyway, great it, game. Great it, de it devolved into uh, violence and bloodshed. <laughs> that, that's not too far off. That's not true. No, no, no. no you're thinking of um, 
The one where you slam your hand on the... Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. That one oh, did be bothered in the bloodshed. <laughs> but you don't need to know about that. Let's nah. go to Wendy. All right, so the People's Choice number 26 <laughs> is another game that I love and adore, and this is Feast for Odin. Woo, crossover! This is what I would call an open world worker placement game. It is a game of abundance. You, uh, a worker placement game, you get workers, you have to feed your people, but guess what? We're just gonna give you the workers every round. Mm. And you have to feed them, but we're gonna give you food every other round, so it's not really hard to feed them. And um, there's tons of action spaces. I think they're in the base game, there's like 81 action spaces or something like that. And you can just kind of go and do whatever you want to do. You want to whale, you want to raid, you want to explore new islands and build boats. You can do that. You're really selling the theme there. I like that. I, mm -hmm. I love this game yeah. so much. Yeah. So Feast for Odin, the people are right. That's all I can say. The people are indeed correct. Nice right. job, people. Excellent Feast for game. Odin, 26. My number 25 is part of a trilogy of games, and so you uh, can narrow down quite a bit. This is from the... Again. Garful yeah. again. It, 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 you know what? Garful I really like the, the fact that you like Gem's games so much and that you publicly appreciate them. Thank you. I, I do. I do feel like there are certain designers that, for probably all of us, give us, you know, kind of hit the sweet spot more often than not. No. <laughs> No, I'm laughing at the... Uh, the 850 the for 850. Tom, 8.5, yeah. <laughs> well, I should have rated it 100. 100. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. That's, That's pretty good. good. My number 25 is Architects of the West Kingdom, which yeah, is yeah. the uh, lightest of the three games in the series by far. If I'm going to introduce somebody to one of this uh, designer's games, and this is actually a co-design between Shem Phillips and, and Sam McDonald, it's either going to be base Raiders of the North Sea or base architects of the West Kingdom. This is slightly heavier than, than Raiders, but just slightly. They both, both of those games have kind of a riff on worker placement. We talked about this a bit, I think it was on your list, Tom? Or yes, somebody's. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. You start with all of your workers at the beginning, and you, as you go to spaces, you're increasing the strength of that space. So the first time you go to the forest, you get one wood because you have one of your workers there. If you go there with another worker, you'll be getting two wood and vice versa and keep going. But the more workers you put on a spot, the more juicy they are for someone to put them in jail. Because mm -hmm. you can jail people and, them to jail. and put them to jail. Uh, so just a very clever game with a relatively simple rule set. Um, plays very quickly. It feels like a race to me. You're trying to kind of race to build that uh, cathedral. Really solid game. Architects of the West Kingdom. Not you a surprise, that. that's you for sure. These games. I, I do. I love those series. games too. Mm -hmm. And I think I think just what Shem does with all the different ways that you can use worker placement and changing just a little bit yeah. is so cool. And I think an underrated aspect of it, another reason why I like this publisher's games, is that I think that they have the best iconography by far. It is consistent. Once you understand how those icons work, right. every new game is little riffs on that iconography. That's mm -hmm. really un an underrated aspect, I think. It helps. Yeah. They do have a very interesting box size, though, that yes. they seem to stick with. You like Don't get Tom started. <laughs> Don't get Tom started. It's real tight. It, it's, gotten, it's gotten more problematic as the games as have the gotten games a little have got stuff. literally <laughs> heavier. A little more breathing room. He's making big box games now, and yeah, yeah that kind of defeats the purpose, I suppose. All right, my number 25 was 16 last year. It was number 5 the year before that. It's dropped. I was surprised this is where it ended up. But you know what? This is not coming out a lot. It's hard to get to the table. And we had this conversation with uh, when um, Roy was here. This is Arkham Horror, the living card game. Yeah. Whoa! Arkham Horror, the living card game. What was it last year? 16 and 5 before that. See, I was under the impression yeah. this would be your number one at some point, and I thought it was moving up, but it's not. It's so stinking <laughs> hard to get to the table. Yeah. You know? It's just, and, I, and you know that it irks me whenever I have a game... That I start, I start to be on the verge of like missing little things. You know what I mean? I want a game where I won't forget stuff because I don't really like that idea of. And then this happened, and then this happened. Oh, oh! I could have spent yeah one mm -hmm. coin and done this. I have thing. heard you complain about that with other games. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that. Yep. That's you're hitting, you're you're bumping up against my threshold, and that bothers me. So this game does that because there's a lot going on. You know. But the game is uh, a brilliant design. I think it's a masterful combination of theme pumped just into cards and the way those cards behave are, you know, the, the, it's very clever. 
and then there's some deck construction if you want it, but also deck evolution as you play through a campaign and you get experience points, you'll turn those into new cards for your deck. And sometimes not just new cards, the same card leveled up. You can get rid of those, uh, you know, that handgun or whatever you've got. you got a Winchester, I don't know. And, uh, and then you can get a better one that ha has more ammo or you can load faster. Or whatever. I like that. I like that you get better at the things you already do anyway. Really cool. Um, solo, two-player, both good. But yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a beast. And campaign only is tough. Because you can yeah. do one-offs. You can. They really want you to do a campaign. Because there's a lot of stuff you won't experience. So, yeah. Arkham LCG. All right. What do you got? My number 25 has been on my list for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 years. Oh, it's a new game, huh? It mm. is not a new game. And it, everyone constantly talks about how this game has been replaced by whatever, whatever, whatever. It was the first of its kind. It set the standard, Chaos. and it's still fantastic, and that's Dominion. Oh. I like Dominion. Oh, okay. It's a straightforward deck-building game. And I know the, the two main complaints leveled against it are that other games are better, which I don't... Which is true, right? What? No, that, that's no, particularly true. I don't know if this is my highest... 100% true. <laughs> I don't know if this is my highest-ranked deck-builder or not. It might be, but I just... it's. I like it, and it's smooth, and it plays. I mean, the other like, oh look, all these new things deck building can do, and that's great. I yeah. like seeing that it can be used in various things. That doesn't make this one bad suddenly. It plays fantastic. Um, and the other thing is, people say, oh, it's broken or whatever, and those people just aren't fun to play games with. Yeah. Um, like, oh, if you just take money, you'll win. Okay. That's. I feel like that's only base game though. I feel like the more you expand out of it... Sure, but it might change. be, if there's the ten cards that are out there, it doesn't matter the expansion, oh, sure. it might be, maybe money is the best option. Yeah, maybe it's not. Is that how you want to play the game? Right. I don't know. I do realize that this criticism could be used against me in other games I've talked about in the past, <laughs> but just as a heads up, like that elephant stupid delivering game, yeah. I've said something similar in that fact. But hey, the point of the matter is, I'm talking about Dominion, not those other games. I like this game a lot. It's a fun uh, deck building game. You know, I just something just came to me that, that I have heard that argument a lot that you know Dominion is no longer a, a, as important of a game because now that's just a mechanism that's been used in other games. That's not really. I mean, we don't say that about push your luck. I mean, if you look at Can't Stop or something like that, that's basically pure push your luck. Mm -hmm. That game's. Greatness is not reduced by the fact that you use that mechanism in other games that have other stuff. Sure, going but on. here's you know, the thing: I can see that wanting that's... to use in other games. I like the fact that Clank, for example, sure. takes mm -hmm. deck building and sticks it in the game. Mm -hmm. That's great. But I still like Dominion and Race for the Galaxy. Give me the exact same feeling. I sit back, grab my cards, I'm playing. I feel like we can get to a very high level play. It's, it gives me the feeling that playing Hearts does. Mm. Everyone at the table sitting there looking at their cards. We all know what we're doing. Yeah. And I don't know, I just enjoy that. Sure. Yeah. Sometimes you want to play a game because it's comfortable, which right. I think Dominion is, yeah. but also Dominion has that every game is very, very different. Every different mm -hmm. Now, for the love of all, it's holy. Give me an app! Are you kidding me? There still Multiple is not times. a... Yeah, there's oh. been so many attempts. Mm -hmm. Because the other day I was like, you know what? I want to play Dominion on my iPad. Mm -hmm. There's no app! Yeah, it's crazy. They're working on it, Tom. The game's not that old. <laughs> Come on! I think the difficulty it's is in getting art this gorgeous translated onto the app. <laughs> well, that's, been really know, that's, true. Handling. that's been what the issue has been. Is See, I feel like up. Dominion is a celebration of that mechanism. I feel like it's very tight. There's a lot... I mean, you have one action, you have one biphase, mm. you have one... It's, it's a lot of rules for just deck building, but I feel like it really lets you learn that mechanism you really can understand, oh, this is this is the benefit of trashing cards and growing deck and doing all that stuff. Whereas you play other games that have deck building in them, and the deck building part isn't always the focus, and so right. you don't really get to enjoy that mechanism. This is going to sound potentially elitist, and if I if so, I apologize. I don't mean it. No, in that no, way. you can say what Stick you want. Pinky I don't up mean you, it in uh, this way. Um, I do wonder if people that played Dominion, if this was not their first exposure to deck building, like if they played other games that have deck building as an element to them. I remember the first time I played Dominion, it was my first time ever being exposed to deck building. It blew my mind. 
it absolutely blew my mind. And I think that that may be part of it, is that some people are coming into Dominion later where they've played six, seven, eight other games that have deck building built into it. It might not feel as relevatory, you know what I mean? See, yeah. I've teeter-tottered. So Dominion was one of my first games into the hobby yeah. um, that brought me in. But I stopped liking it when, well, I didn't stop liking it, but when I when we were introduced to DC deck building, yeah. I thought, oh my goodness, this is so much more free. I don't yeah, have to right. think better, so hard. So yeah. I enjoy it. <laughs> but then after I played so much DC deck building, yeah. <laughs> then I realized that it didn't have anything more to give me, but Dominion kept giving. Yeah. And oh. so now I flip flop oh. back mm -hmm. that I prefer Dominion mm -hmm. because I feel oh, like oh, there's oh, always oh, that challenge. There's sure. always something new. So yeah. Yeah. So I disagree. Mr. All right. Hoity toity. I know some people online. Hoity toity doesn't have any tech building. There's a lot no. of people talking like oh, the app is around the corner. It's been, it's been Dominion came out a on, decade, yeah. more than a there's decade ago. Been, came out in 2008. There's also been at least three. App implementations that, have, for one reason or another, don't stay. I don't know. I agree. I don't. I don't know why. Also, uh, can difficult. someone get me in on this beta, mm. um, so I can play it? All right. Mm. Beta Tom. All right. So the people's choice number twenty-five is Orleans, also known as Orleans. 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 This is not a deck builder. It is a bag builder. And so what you're doing is you're collecting workers throughout the game, and you are putting them in your bag, and you're pulling them out, and you're placing them on your nice little board in front of you and triggering off actions. And there's tons of fun different things you can do in this game, a lot going on. And I think people like it for one, was this the first bag builder? It's the first if one it's that not I the knew first, about. it's the first popular first well one. First well-known one. Kind of hit the site, guys. Um, yeah. so no, I I, oh, technically that. the first bag builder is probably Puzzle Strike. Although Puzzle Strike is not really a bag builder, it's a deck it's a it's a it's a Shuffler deck in a bag. Deck builder, yeah yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I mean, this has that like first first at it has done really good stuff. Also, I think just the the people that like Euro games, you like lots of options and lots of directions you can go. This allows for that. So, any other thoughts on that? If not, twenty five. It's a great choice. I love Orleans. <laughs> Orleans. Orleans. Just, just upset me. <laughs> Number oh, twenty-five. Thomas. People's choice. Orleans. My number 24 is a game that has moved up a lot. Um, I had mentioned before that there are other kind of big troops on a map game that have pushed things like, uh, I think it was Rising Sun I talked about, a couple other games. Through the Wars. Through the Wars down a little bit. And this is one of the games that is pushing those out. My number 24 is Mezzo. I really, wow. Wow. really wow. It's really wow. high, Mike. Yeah. really like this game. I, I played it at the uh, last retreat, uh, so very recently. I just think this is such a clever way to approach this type of game, where there is definitely the things that you're looking for in these style of games. There's, you know, direct uh, confrontation and, and combat, but there's also some really, really clever tactical play that you can have, some strategic elements that you can be looking because you're playing through three ages. Um, there were some production issues, I think, that unfortunately have caused some uh, people to, to maybe look in other directions. But this is, again, I think a very clever way to approach this Troops on a Map style game, much in the way that I almost Kevin don't consider this a Troops on a Map exactly, game. Exactly, right? It is, but it doesn't feel exactly like one. Then it would not. No, it is well, a Troops no, 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 on a Map game. No, 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 you're right. You said it is, and it just doesn't feel I, like I'm agree. pretty sure Mike yeah. came up with that term, so it's okay. It can be whatever he wants it to be. That's right. This is really. Good, good call. Only have a so no, minutes. no. But if you have an actual, if you have an <laughs> actual, camera. why would it not be that type of a game? I'm, now I'm, I don't know why. I, yeah. I, I don't have any good reasoning here. I'm still pretty impressed that this is this high. Yes, you're saying this is better is than like this is this is in the same category as Kemet and Blood Rage, yes. which both I think were further down your list. Yes, this has moved above those for me. That is a a choice. Have you played it? It's a recently? compliment. It's different now. No, I'm saying, <laughs> I'm saying, like, is this one that you that you played? I played it, it to or? do the review. Yeah, so I, don't I know. mean, uh, you may, you know, you've played enough games. It maybe it's just not for you. No, no, I, I actually don't dislike it. I think it's yeah. a fine game. It's just, you know, if you put it next to Kemet, for 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 me, for sure, me, not sure, not, sure. not your good opinion, uh -huh. uh, but for me, it would curl up in a ball and weep and run away, no, and Kemet I, would sit there and be I like, think, oh, 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 oh. I think this is superior to Kemet, yeah, and I like Kemet a lot. That's probably true. It's true to me. Number 24, Mezzo. So weird. My number 24 I've talked about quite a bit, so I'll try to be brief. This is Everdell. Yeah. Everdell is a, a supremely popular game, it seems to me, anyway. 
Uh, the yard work definitely doesn't help. But, uh, doesn't hurt. Doesn't hurt. Sorry, that's <laughs> what I meant. Um, it's a very gorgeous game, very cutesy game, fantastic artwork all over the place. My favorite thing about this game is the combination of worker placement, where you can send workers out to collect goods, take actions, whatever. Or your turn can be, instead of a worker placement turn, buying a card, like playing a card out. So you're doing tableau building and worker placement. Kind of like Lewis and Clark did. Hmm. I think this one does that better. You know, same yes. combo. This one does it better. So, um, just really enjoy it. Good expansions. Those have been fun. But even just the core base game with everything in there will give you plenty of joy and plenty of things to discover. So, fun world to yes. to visit, Everdell. Indeed. My number 24. Speaking of fun worlds to visit, my number 24 was 11 last year, 3 the year before that. And the only reason it's dropping, I still think this is a fantastic game, is because I think in a couple years... I will have finished this in a sense where I've seen everything in the game, and that is Seventh Continent. Mm. So I already took out legacy games off my list. Yeah. Um, this is not a legacy game because you can play it over and over and over again, although I think once you've gone through all the different curses and stories and crossovers, you, you wouldn't. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that's the case. But still love the system, still love the feeling of exploration, still love the putting the map together, still you like the fact that you can do all sorts of things. And the system of cards, you know, playing cards, you're going through a deck of cards to do a challenge I really like. To push your luck, right? Yeah, I'm really pumped about this 7th Citadel, I think it's called. Citadel, yeah. Ah, oh, yes. But for like, now... From Fiduti. Fiduti co-designed it. <laughs> I would not be excited as much. Be, be something else. Yeah. yeah, you would simultaneously flip over map cards. <laughs> uh, and, I, and special powers. Yeah. Like, you're about to flip over map tile, and be like, you can't. Assassinate it. <laughs> yeah, Seventh Continent, I, I, I agree with you on the exploration element, but, but there's a lot of things that don't work for me in this game. I get it. It's not everyone's cup of tea, but man, some of the best game experiences in my life have been playing this game. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. my number 24 is Seventh Continent. All right, people's number 24 is something that the people have been really rooting for, and that's Root. Oh! Wow. That's a yes, E. That's a that's E. That's All right, so Root <laughs> is a super cute game. I think that's why people come and play it, is for the adorableness. I mean, look at those little eyes. Oh, a little woodland a little light game, is yeah. it? Mm -hmm. They're uh, definitely not going to rise up and destroy you with a knife. I think people stay for the player powers. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's my that's least what favorite faction. Oh, I the love the Woodland Alliance. Alliance. That's one of my top. I mean, when you're playing yeah. against them, yeah, do you like them as much? <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, I, I, I'm the evil cat sheriff. I'm like, these people need to be put down. <laughs> I hate right. these mice. Yeah. Sorry. You're good. So I think that people really like this game because of the very interestingness of the different player factions. You're going for different goals, so it's not just a clear combat game, even though it is a combat game. It's, you know, I'm trying to get majority of spaces. I'm trying to do other stuff. There's fun of different things, and so that is People's Choice, number 24, Root. And it also has... If not the best, no, it is the best board game app. I so. agree. If I was doing my top 100 apps, and I know I've not played enough to do that, Root yeah. would be number it's one. Number I know one. Chris plays it often. It's yeah. incredible. Oh my word, it's that good. I have to finally, just get the app so I can learn the and, game and play. And for a game, I think this that complex, would be an interesting. What's happening for you to to learn because it, it, it teaches, teaches you, you the game one step at a time. It's yeah. really slow for people to watch that. I, don't, I you think know, without I, playing, would I you won't. watch it, people? Say yes. Also, I think yes. I wouldn't be playing. I'd be just learning. I guess. No, right? you play. You play soon enough. I yeah. mean, no, yeah, you actually play like little scenarios. It gets you in, and and I think the people. There are probably a lot of people that are afraid of even trying to learn the app. So I think you might get some people that would. I'm kind of appreciate afraid. That. That's, that's, I keep hearing this game is very heavy and very. No, you've played much heavier. First, games you were afraid. You were petrified. You've played much heavier games. Than this. <laughs> that's true. She's right. All right. Yeah, that was people's choice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my number 23 is a new game to the list. Mm, ah. This is the other new one, right? Because of the Sleeping Gods, right? Correct. This is the other new one. Oh. This is, uh, oh, what is a game that uh, really kind of came out of nowhere for me. I, I it, it was a big Kickstarter project, but I didn't get it on the Kickstarter project because I didn't really 
no, that, that it would be a, oh. a game for me. Did you see that Gen Con and wish that you could get it there? I saw it at Gen it Con like and I was system. able to get it there. <laughs> it looks like a stereo system. It does, really. My number 23 is unsettled. This uh, just oh, I feel unsettled about your decision. So clever, this game. It's a, it's it's kind of a modular type of a game where you are exploring on a planet. You've crash landed on some type of a planet, and you have to find a way to survive. You have to get off of that planet, and each planet is a puzzle, and there are different puzzles within it. But depending on what planet you're playing, you might be facing some type of electrical storms. You might be facing some, you know... Uh, the creatures with spores, and it just depends on, on which planet you choose to play with. It is a cooperative game that has some really, really clever systems to it. Um, and I love the fact that once you know the base game, once you know how the game works, mm -hmm. you could put any of those planets in there, and it's really a different experience. It plays very differently depending upon what planet you're in. And it was interesting when we were talking about it in the review. One of the things that you didn't like was uh, I, I. I really kind of agree with you here, and this, this is a great placement. One of the things you didn't like about the game was that you felt like you were punished sometimes for exploring. That is correct, right? And absolutely, because it's not an exploration game; it's a survival game. And I like the fact that I think it, I think we have differences on right. that. Yeah, Because yeah. mine was Seventh Continent, it, which is an exploration game. That's why I brought this up because this is a nice kind of a contrast between two games that have. Some similarities in that you're kind of exploring a map right. and things like that, but one is more focused on exploration, yes. and one is focused on survive with an imminent timer ticking down. And they both can be great. They both can be great experiences. <laughs> and this is actually me not yeah. being simpering at you. Yeah, yeah. But that is that is a good point. I yeah. agree. And I, I'm definitely on the one side. And sure, sure. So you know what? I'll tell you why. Why don't you guys sit next to each other? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, this is a game that I, I am I'm still finding new things to explore, and I've enjoyed teaching it to people. It's, it's not the easiest teach in the world, but it's not something that I feel like, oh my gosh, I gotta, I, I, how do I teach it? I don't have to relearn it every time. Sure. Really, really good game. Unsettled, 23. I was there when Mike uh, was salivating you were. this game. It's I a was. little bit like creepier that. and like darker than I expected. It can be, yeah. The, yeah. The, the, the writing, that's the other thing I didn't mention. The writing is just fantastic in this game. Just really, really good writing. Not as good as the writing in my game. All right, let's hear it. Carpe diem. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is my other new game. Mike, I told you we would have a crossover. I oh. told you one of the games oh, would be the same gone. game. <laughs> wow, really? Sleeping God. Yours a little higher than oh. that. Oh, a little look bit. At that. Barely. I told you I could Woo. I could sense it. Yeah, yeah. That Sleeping Gods was gonna pop in here yeah. for you. And it does for me. Mike already talked about it plenty. Fantastic game. Love it. Twenty-three for me. And I could definitely see it moving up. Me too. I actually could see it moving up. Me too. Um Sleeping Gods. I think this is as of right now. And this might be, you know, this might be the the truth for the, for the rest of his design career. This might be his magnum opus. You, it's similar to a feeling of Gloomhaven, where it's like, I mean, obviously, Isaac Childress, the designer of Gloomhaven, and Ryan Lockett, the designer of this game, have people that kind of work with them. Of course, right? Of course. But for the most part, these are the creations of one individual. Right. That's incredible to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it, it's just amazing that. But there's so much. They can put out this volume and this quality yeah, of work. So much artwork that yes. was drawn, the writing, yes. but he had help with the writing, sure. yes. Mechanically, concept even. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's amazing. It's it's astounding. Mm -hmm. It really is. So there you go. Sleeping Gods. My number 23 sounds like it should have a story in the game, but it does not really. Um, and this is a game that has been on my list here for six years, and it is another one that I'm always bringing out and teaching to people at conventions. So it's Heimas, and it has a grid. And that is Adventureland. I, wow. I feel like sometimes I'm the only person who's like, I love Adventureland. I really and, like it too, but not in my top 100, but I do like it. Oh, man. And in this game, you're just, you're bingoing. <laughs> item. You flip a card over, and an item shows up on the board. And then you move your piece to go grab that item or go do something else. Um, and then there's a, a few scenarios, so the games feel a little bit different. I don't know. Every time I play this, I'm like, "Woo! Let's try it again." It's yeah. a great, great fun game from Haba of all things. Yeah. This this yeah. came out as part of their family game line. Yes. They stopped doing well. They kept doing yellow game boxes, and they did three of them. One no one ever remembers. 
then there's Adventureland, and then there was Karuba, which went on to win awards yes, yes, and be the most right. popular game, which I think hurt Adventure Land. They have since released more, though. They, they, still... did, another, they did another cycle. Oh, yeah, they sure. That, I'm saying the original three. The original three, three yes. Um, yeah, and this one, this is one of those games that if you're like, I would like to try this, you probably can find it for an inexpensive price somewhere. You I can. Now, the expansion is really hard to get a hold of. but the base Yes, game but I get. don't think you need, you need the that. expansion. I no. have the expansion. I play it occasionally, yeah. but the base game is fine. Yes. All right. All right. The number three for the people is... Three? Is what? 23. Oh, 23. Yes. Good. 23. Oh, yeah. We're already at three. We skipped wow, a whole Wow. I'm like, bunch. man, time warp. <laughs> so 23 for the people is Five Tribes. Ooh, crossover. This game is such a cool way to use the... How do you say it? Mancala, Mancala. Mancala, I think. Mon okay. Mm. Uh, but you use that mechanism, and so basically what you're doing is you're picking up meeples, and you're placing down one at a time as you're moving throughout the board and you're triggering based on meeple color, whatever you get. There's tons of different things you can do, but I think that what makes this game really fun is looking at the board and trying to figure out what you can do with the pieces. Mm -hmm. You know, I look at this thing and I can move it this way or I can drop it off this way or I can go this way down here. And where you end is important. And so, I, I don't know, it's a fun puzzle to try to trick out. And then on top of that, you're bidding for turn order. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at the state of the board and you're saying, is someone going to take that are they going to mess it up, or is something else bigger and better going to appear based on uh, what other people have done? Do I want to go first and spend victory points, which is you know money and victory points, which are the same thing, or do I want to wait and you know hold back and hope that something good is left or something good is there? So there's just a lot of good decisions in this game. I really enjoy it. Haven't played it in a long time though. Mm -hmm. I was saying the same thing yesterday. Yeah, it's, it yeah. dropped a little bit on my list and solely because I haven't played it in a while, but I, I really like it. I mean, it has been on, I mean, it's dropped. It was, highest was 10 for the people, lowest was 17, and that was the last two years. Now it's okay. 23, so it's still really highly revered. It's a great game. It was on um, that show. Oh, man, I forgot it. Anyway, it was the, the <laughs> Dice Tower. Uh -huh. No, Will Wheaton's YouTube. Tabletop? Yeah, Tabletop. Tabletop. He did one of this, and that's where I was introduced to oh, it okay. first. And so he I did five tribes, huh? Yeah, I remember he did. That. Huh. Yeah, I, I enjoyed that. So anyways, that is People's Choice, number 23, Five Tribes. My number 22 is a game that... Um, I always I, I always wonder how popular it is because I don't hear anybody talking about it. I never mm -hmm. see anybody playing it. But they've continued to release expansions for it, and uh, as a matter of fact, a, a kind of a big box is collecting them all. I should be getting in the next couple of days. My number twenty-two is Petrocore, which is oh, wow. a game. Yeah. What was it last year? Uh, good question. It it's gone up one point. It was twenty-three last year. I probably I, okay. I don't want to duplicate my expressing of surprise, which probably happened last year, but. Surprise has been dealt. Yes. Wow. Good choice. Thank you. Yeah. Petrocore is a game that uh, is uh, it, it it belies what it really is because if you look at it, you are playing as a cloud, and you are moving o over these nine tiles that make up the play area that have different crops on them that need a certain amount of rain to trigger and give you points. And so you play cards from your hands that are going to manipulate how these clouds work. It might add raindrops to the cloud that are in your color. If two clouds come together, they become a thunder cloud, and they and, and it kind of changes the property. It is a can be a very very mean area control. It's a dual area control game. You've got area control on those tiles, and then you've got a weather board mm -hmm. that also has some area control to it. So. It's a game that doesn't play like it looks. It has this beautiful aesthetic and this kind of pleasant theme. It looks serene, right? It looks very serene, but it yeah. can be a pretty cutthroat, very interactive game. Uh, it plays in a, in a relatively short playtime for the experience that you get. Uh, some of the expansions have added some neat little twists to it. They've had some little uh, bees and flowers, and, and uh, the newest one is cows, which adds... Um, Methane? What? It does add methane. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely okay. adds methane. Cows produce methane. So, uh, yeah, my, my my number 22 is a game that I feel like uh, not, a lot, not a lot of people have played, but it must be doing okay because it's been consistently in print and they keep releasing expansions. So, 22 is Petrichor. Huh. I like that. Mm -hmm. I remember 22 was 20 last year, and that was the first time I was on the list. It's a relatively new game that has a ton of content and more to come. 
I'm very excited about. This is unmatched. Ooh. Unmatched. I'm just saying the whole shebang here. Okay. I'm not picking a thing. Battle of Legends is up there. That's great. Get that one. <laughs> Battle of Legends Volume 2, which just dropped. That's great. Go go ahead and get that one. You know, go with not whatever Cobble you want. Not Cobble and Fog, though, right? Cobble and Fog is fantastic. Get That's that my one. favorite. Just by Bruce Lee. Not it by itself. <laughs> won't work, okay? You, no. you gotta get more. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Cobble and Fog is still my favorite. I love the literary figures. Yeah. And I love mechanically what they did with those people. Yeah, mm -hmm. It's just brilliant. You know, the Invisible Man, Dracula, Jekyll and Hyde, that other fella. <laughs> oh, so good. So good. Head to head combat on a small board with your miniature or miniatures moving around. Card play. Oh, that's what I'm all about. I love those things. So, yeah, and I cannot wait for the Marvel stuff. That's, uh, yeah. Yeah, I actually did, I haven't played any of the new sets at all because yeah. you've been playing the most of them. Yeah, right, yeah. and reviewing them. But yeah, Marvel, yeah. I'm coming back in. I got I to gotta see it. It's a real clever game system. It yeah. really is. Very psyched. There you go. My number 22 is, in my opinion, better than Mezzo. Mm. And that would be Kemet. Okay. Kemet is amazing. Now, it's kind of funny because they came out with a new Kemet Blood and Sand, which is just a 1.3 version of the base game. It uses and the 1.5 rules. Yes, basically. but even they are just, you know, yeah. it's it's a new version of the game. I don't particularly like how the board looks, but everything else about it is better and cooler and bigger monsters, and I just love Kemet. I like the troops in the map. I've always been a big fan of that genre, but it always feels like Hit the guy in last place, yeah. and sometimes you don't even fight in them. This one encourages you to fight, and there's a tech tree that's amazing. And most importantly, by far, you control monsters. giant monsters. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, we know. At, no, you want me to like your game? Let me control a giant monster that actually does something. Mm -hmm. And here they do. Oh, Except, like Mezzo. Gotcha. No, again, I like Mezzo, <laughs> and that was an excellent choice, Thank Mike. You. Thank you. And Kemet is an excellent choice, too. Not I'm going to have a heart excellent. attack. Actually. Slightly less excellent, I'm gonna have a heart but still excellent. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and do this top one. There you go. All right. Anyway, I really like Kemet, and it has, it's has it been on the list for me. many, many years now. Uh, uh, nine years. Yeah, It was 25 last year, and it's gone up a bit. So Kemet, my number 22. Mm. All right, the People's Choice number 22 is Great Western Trail. This also mm. includes cows, and it didn't mm. need an expansion to get there. That's for sure. Um, no mm. methane, though. That's a very odd dig. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't need an expansion to have mm. cows. Mm -hmm. This game is oh. all about the cows. It needs an expansion to make it fun, but other than that. Whoa! Okay. Uh, not a fan of good, Great Western Trail. Good people. dig, Mike. Sorry, not a fan of Great Western Trail. You know, He's I, wrong. I played this game once, and I played it with a really rough rule teach and I'm pretty sure we missed a lot of stuff mm -hmm. so I it's was one of Chris the, teaching I, no oh, okay no he was not he's a great teacher no we I don't know it, it was a struggle he gave me thumbs up mm -hmm. thanks honey no so uh, this is a game where you're deck building your cows you're building a deck of cows you want to get rid of the, Wait, the your low cows, ones you said what you play cows? You're deck building you're, cows. You're building cows. You have you, a, you have the leg cows card, of cards. Then you've got the torso cards of cows. Card. That's Frank and cow. You're thinking Frank and cow. Game. Oh, sorry, that's a different game. Okay. Cows everywhere. No, what you're doing? Or whatever, right? Yeah, you're trying to sell cows. Yeah. So you're building oh, okay. a deck of cows so that you can get higher cows. So you can sell them farther away to bigger, better things. And it's got a very interesting, almost rondelle-like system for and you the build actions. That rondelle kind yeah, of. you're building it out, so you skip a lot of spaces initially. You build it more. You get in each other's way and make them pay you stuff to pass your buildings and do things. And hmm. it's. I've never played that game, but that board just look, looks just like Kalis. Hmm. With that path, a little bit, yeah, 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 multiple yeah. paths. It's different, yeah. yeah. And, and anyway, it's cowboys. That's what cowboys did. Right. I thought maybe cows. I haven't played the game. And I have I barely seen this new cover, so I thought maybe yeah. the old cover with the three fellows looking at you <laughs> was from your POV. <laughs> no. And that's why it was great. washed out because cows don't see every color, you know what I mean? Come play the so game you where you cow. are the cow. That's right. Yeah, no, this is uh, Cattle Ranch, Cattle Driving, and, and this new cover is better. The first cover was very deep fake creepy. Um, and I do like a lot of Alexander Pfister games. I'm very much in the minority that people are raking me over the coals. Most people love Great Western Trail, obviously. Oh, that's, I don't that's like That's Mike's it. opinion. I, He's allowed to have it. Yeah. You should not criticize other people's opinions. I, Goodness Alexander Pfister is hit or miss for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I love, like his smaller I love games some of his games, games, games. And yeah, some not so much. So that is number 22, Great Western Trail. Ooh, one left.
All right, my number 21 is another Troops on a Map game. This has been my Troops on a Map section, apparently. Clearly. This one is, uh, I've got slightly higher than Mezzo, so that should make you happier. Uh, I think it's a crossover with you. Um, my number 21 is Lords of Hellas. Oh, wow. Yeah. Lords of Hellas. Um, wow. Yeah, I really, I still really like Lords of Hellas a whole lot. I feel like it, um, it's not the cleanest rule set. No. It's got rough edges like all of the Awakened Realms games, but I say the same thing about this that I do about their other games, uh, you know, things like uh, Nemesis and, and, uh, and other of their kind of big games is that they can give you some sessions that are less than ideal because of certain things that get in the way, but when you have a good game of Lords of Hellas, it just is so satisfying. It really is. And it comes down to, yeah. I'm going to kill this monster, and you're like, right. but I'm going to take control of the, the land, and right. I'm about to do this. And I feel like that's a cool it combo. It really is, because there are you know multiple win conditions, and, and you know you can usually, I mean, you can clearly see what people are going for. Right. Um, and so it leads to some really nice kind of interaction, not just on the board, but directly with the players, like, okay, I know what I need to do, but I need to stop her, too. Right. You know what I mean? So, um, can't stop me. Dude. Yeah, I can't. That's why I don't play with Wendy, because I'm going to get wrecked every time, I'm sure. Anyway, I really like Lords of Hellas. It was nice. I don't think you would play this. It was I'd nice play to, it, uh, to play the, the Lords of Ragnarok, because it kind of gave me a kind of a new way to look at this. I'm like, okay, how did they change it? What, what yes. things did they feel like they wanted to change? And, and so... Um, it still actually raised my appreciation of Hellas. So, okay. my number twenty-one, Lords of Hellas. Talking about raising appreciation, mm -hmm. Mike. My number twenty-one. Um, I was kind of flabbergasted. That ended up at twenty-one. <laughs> okay, you were. That's when you get from trusting a computer. You're surprised it was this high or this low? I'm surprised it was this high. Okay, it was eighty-one last time. Whoa. Not on the list before that. So from eighty-one, it went to twenty-one. I know you'll back me up on this. Um, well, if he does, then I got your back, too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cthulhu Death May Die. Woo! Cthulhu Death May Die. I thought it was pretty good when I first played it. Played it a few times. I still have an issue with the fact that these tiles are too <laughs> stinking small. They are too small. If the room gets filled, I just have to put monsters or figures near the room. Yeah, yeah. And say they're in that room. But... All this content, yes. all these different chapters, the the way in which it tackles a very dark setting with some kind of humor. Yeah. Morbid humor, certainly mm -hmm. kind of, you know, um, off the wall humor, but it does have it in there. It's yeah. not as self-important as some of the other Eldritch Horror, Arkham right. Horror kind of games. You know, in this one, your people are going crazy, and the crazier they get, the more powerful they are. Okay, <laughs> and they just lean into that. Um, fully co-op game. Yep. A game that is very, I don't have a better way to say it, punchy. It's like, very quickly you're yes. like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? And then the big monster comes out, you got to kill him three times. And so by the end, you are rolling a bucket of dice. You're like, <laughs> ah, nah, nah, nah. Uh -huh. did I kill it? Because mm. I have one swing to kill him. I need to deal like 18 all at uh -huh. once. Um, yeah, it just kind of goes up and then eventually it's like, boof. Mm -hmm. You know, and those last few turns are insane in yeah. this game. Um, very cinematic for me. Very exciting. Yeah. Stand-up kind of game. Mm. Cthulhu Death May Die. Like I said, I was very surprised it was this high, but um, yeah, I guess I just kept... Voting it up over other things, it's yeah. it's it, it it gets me, it excites me. That's my twenty-one. I got your back on that one. There you go, Tom. You have my back as well. You have to. I think Mike. If Mike has your back, you don't need anyone else. Oh man, what? I, I'm, I'm trying that. to figure out what's going on here. I feel like there's a whole there's a whole <laughs> thing happening that I'm not even aware of. I'm just trying to be nice. I said it at the beginning. I there's I'm being straightforwardly nice. Uh -huh. My number twenty-one. That was straightforward. Uh -huh. My number twenty-one has been on the list since it came out, and yes, 
it has replaced Agricola, and that is Caverna. Ah. And I still really enjoy it. So I'm a, I'm a big Rosenberg fan, and I like Agricola a lot. So uh, whenever I say I, I, Caverna replaced Agricola, it's not that Agricola suddenly became bad. Right. It's just I like Caverna better, and I don't see why I would play both since they're very similar. Yes, you're going to have and, the same experience. Basically. And Caverna's more forgiving. And if you like the harder, tougher thing, you'll like Agricola better. That's that's sure. simply what it is. If you like the fact that you have a hard time feeding your people, and that's like the whole focus, and you want restrictive scoring, but you like the randomness, not the randomness, but the um, the variability of having a different hand every time, yeah, yeah. you'll like Agricola better. I like that variability of the open hand, but I don't like the other stuff as much. Caverna, you can be king of the sheep, um, or I usually play king of the... King of the veggies. Mm. Now I'm planting veggies everywhere. I like it. I like it. There's giant. a lot of worker placements to get things. Mm. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, I would. I'm getting, yes, I'm the green giant. <laughs> I got it. All right. And I just like this Glad game a lot. Caverna. Those pumpkins are so cute, too. Well, they are like they might be carrots in some games. <laughs> <laughs> they're pumpkins. You replaced them with carrots. It doesn't matter what I did. Mm. All right. Pumpkins are not a vegetable. They're a gourd. They're fruit. Not because there's seeds on the middle? What are, what are they're pumpkins? They're gourds. They're gourds. They're mm -hmm. gourds. Aren't most squash fruits? Technically, oh, because they're. I don't know. Because they have. Because the seeds, seeds? are in the middle? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not from this country. <laughs> <laughs> I'm frightened and confused. That's important. All right, number 21 for the people is Dominion, which we already talked oh, so much wow. about. Yes! All right. Validation! All right. Go, Tom. It's a there you go. Good the crossover hat! Oh, I didn't even notice you had taken it off. I'm supposed to throw it at you. All right, hang on. Try this purple one. Okay, ready? There we go. Ready, moment of truth. Oh! <laughs> okay, we got to try again. Until Overshot it the target. Okay, here you go, Frank. Oh. There you go. It's lovely. Wait. That's yeah. a good look, right? That's, there. A, look that's that. a good Dominion hat. That's the king of the vegetables if I've ever yeah. seen it right there. <laughs> <laughs> I think that should be one of the art on the cards. Jolly green. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Purple giant. Oh, right. So, yeah, Dominion. We just had so much good stuff already. It is... The first deck builder, it is just, yeah, the celebration mechanics. That's what I really feel about it. So, Dominion, number 21 for the people. All right, good choice, people. Good way to end. All right, before you all jump away, some closing thoughts here. First of all, we are coming back live in 29 minutes oh. to do crowd surfing. So, we'll take a look at Kickstart projects in the next week. Um, we are going to be back here tomorrow. Yep. Same time, same place. Mm -hmm. mm. Actually, tomorrow morning, breakfast. we're board game breakfast at 9 a.m. Yep. Eastern Standard Time. And then at noon, we're doing our top 20 to 11 games. Whoa! It's getting more and more exciting. Yeah. Let me see what I got there. Hit. Super hit. I can hit. see what the people. That's unexpected. <laughs> hit. Uh -huh. All right. Uh -huh. Also, obviously, we noticed some of the uh, audio questions. One of the reasons we're running a Kickstarter right now, DiceTowerKickstarter.com. I do want to bring in an audio engineer. We need to really replace our whole audio system. Yeah. It was built years and years ago, and the person who built it is no longer here, so we actually don't know how half of it works. <laughs> so we want to fix that. But I want to say thank you to Roy for coming in and bringing us mics, but a yeah. bigger thanks to the man who's doing like eight jobs right now, mm -hmm. fixing the mics, running three computers. Um, thank you to Chris. He did a fantastic job this episode. Also watching chat. Mm -hmm. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time. Until then, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Wendy Yee. I'm Mike Delicio. I'm Z Garcia. Have fun. Growing gourds. Yes. Ooh, good one. <laughs>